Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. <laughs> Whoa, okay. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the Radio Talk Show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted fella. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It could be anything we discussed on the air this week. It could be anything they discussed on another radio program this week. That's fine. We don't care. I got big brass balls, baby. I don't care. It's all fine with me. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you do is call 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Adrian on the Tom Likas Show. Yo, Adrian. What's up, Tom? Not much. So how come you guys don't disclose your location anymore? We're forbidden to do so through a cease and desist letter we received from... Oh, you just get stalked? I'm sorry? You're getting stalked too much? Or... No, no. The The place where we are, the company that owns it, uh, wrote a uh, cease and desist letter to the legal department of CBS Radio. And we were told as tenants here that we were forbidden to mention where we are. Well, that's just boring. I was hoping for a more exciting story. Well, it doesn't get more exciting than that, huh? The legal department of one company contacted the legal department of another company, and they ordered me to stop saying where we are. All right, dude. Thanks a lot. Peace out. Thank you. I like pe Everybody already knows where we are. That's the funny thing. <laughs> it's not a secret, but... Now I'm not allowed to say. That's going to make a big difference. 1-800-5800-TOM. <laughs> that's our telephone number. John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, John. All right. So I got a Thanksgiving story for you. <laughs> a Thanksgiving story? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I heard about the turducken that you guys are going to make for Christmas. Yes. Now get this. I made one for Thanksgiving, but I took it to the next level. I stuffed a turkey with a duck, a duck with a chicken, a chicken with a Cornish hen, and the Cornish hen with shrimp. And then I wrapped the whole thing in bacon. <laughs> really? That was awesome. You should have just stuffed a pig with all the rest of it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> no, but it was so awesome. The bad thing is that we're still eating it. But <laughs> nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> when they ask what's for dinner, we tell them Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh my! Yeah, yeah, it was it was freaking awesome. I'll bet. And, and I also gotta say, I started listening to your show yesterday, and I'm addicted. It it rocks. It freaking rocks, dude. Love that. Well, thank you for that, John. I appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, this is Tim. I just said that, Tim. <laughs> first of all, I just want to say I love your show. I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. I got a financial question for you. Long-time listener, first-time caller. I got a financial question. You're so well-informed. Um, I love your show. Who are you voting for in 08? Love your show. <laughs> Everybody I talk to is listening to it. I was looking to buy a house this uh, summer. Yes. I've got about $100,000 in my account that I can put towards the house. Um, I'm looking to get something that's about $550,000. Um, I make about 70000 and my parents said that they will match whatever I put down for the house. So 
I'm trying to figure out if I should take what they're matching me and invest it or if I should just put it all in to the house. I'm well, you should be putting 20% down. Do you even have any idea what the house will actually cost? I'm, well, my price range that I'm looking at is around 550 all right, so you're talking about one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars or so, and the rest you uh, you're talking about banking it. Uh, um, my idea is to invest it and try to have a cushion in case something bad happens. And well, you're also going. By the way, when you buy a house, you're going to need money to pay for property taxes. Yeah, and those homeowners companies... insurance, yeah. fire, and possibly flood insurance, depending on where you are. Earthquake insurance, living in Southern California. Yes. And you're going to need maintenance on that house. Yes. You know, because any time a pipe bursts, any time an appliance breaks down, you can't call the super, can't call the building manager. You have to get it fixed. That's also kind of, kind of why I want a buffer of that yep. money instead of putting it all into the house. No, I would not. I would not put more than the twenty percent down that I think you should put down. Uh, you don't want to pay a PMI. Uh, one of the things you're going to run into, because, uh, you know, I'm buying a house myself right now. Uh, some places are saying 20% down isn't enough. Really? So you better check with a few lenders and see how much they're going to make you put down, what kind of credit requirements they're going to have. Have you checked your credit score, your FICO score lately? It's, my credit score is well over 730. Okay, good. Keep it that way. Don't open any new credit accounts right now. Don't open any new uh, credit cards. Don't take any new loans. Don't buy any new cars. Okay. Keep it the way it is. But you better talk with lenders and find out what terms uh, they are requiring uh, in order for you to get a loan. Okay, so you definitely would not put down that extra money even though you have it. Not unless you have to. Okay. But 20% I would put down. Okay, I agree with that. Okay. Yes. Can you blow me up? Of course I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. I'm cracking through these. Don on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Don. Thanks for all the great advice. Uh, I not a a, I have a statement and a question. I am a huge wine fan. I've been making it for the last eight years out of my house. And I've won a few awards with it. I would love to send you a bottle and get the huge, get the official Tom like his critique, if I could. Yep, would love uh, to taste it. What 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 varietal are you making? Uh, this year we're doing uh, Petit Verdot, uh, Cabernet, and uh, Cab Franc, and we're going to do some blending at the end of the year when we're ready. I can hardly wait, but I've got some older things that are ready to drink. I'd love to send you one. Would love to taste it. Where are your grapes coming from? We get them from all over. This uh, this last year, we got some from Sonoma. I'm very lucky to get those. We got some from uh, uh, the Temecula area, but up in the hills where it's uh, where it's uh, it gets cool at night, so it's not the desert heat from from the valley. Uh, we get them from up your way. In fact, uh, uh, if you want me to make some wine out of your grapes when your vineyard comes in, I would be happy to do that. Look at that! Put your picture on the label. That would be fun. I would be outrageous. Just let me know what I need to do. I'm sure the uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms has me on a blacklist already. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, what what's up with the tasting room? I haven't heard it in a while. Oh, it's on. It's uh, In L.A., it's on at a different time. It has moved uh, to Sunday from 7 to 9 p.m. 7 to 9 p.m. on Sunday, did you say? Yes. It used to be Saturday 3 to 5. Now it's Sunday 7 to 9 p.m. I'm writing it down. Thanks, Tom. I'll send you some wine. Don, thank you. Nikki on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Nikki. I've been wanting to call for so long, and I just kept calling, and I got through. Wow. Question for you. I was curious. Do you really know, like, your true demographic? Is it majority men, majority women? Well, I decide. I black? decide. I decide the demographic along with the radio stations. So I, I yeah, and of course I know what it is. Well, who who do, who do we talk to every day? Who who listens to you? Our primary like, if audience. I, if I listen, I I hear a lot of women call, and even though they say they don't listen, the callers don't I tell love you. Your show. The callers, I love your show, darling, way. listen to me. The callers are one percent of the audience. Okay. Don't be fooled by the sound of the callers who listens to the show. Because I, I mean. 
I know a lot of people that listen to you, but I don't hear like a lot of black people call in. But I, I listen to you, and I know a lot of people that do. Well, here's the thing. Uh, and by the way, we happen to know that's true, but the primary audience of our show is men between the ages of 18 and 44. Mm -hmm. And that's who it's aimed at. Other people do listen, like you. Oh, yeah. But I've listened since 90, I want to say late 98. Ever eat a kosher hot dog? No. How about any kosher food at all? No. You never had a Hebrew National hot dog? They're so good. No. They're like all beef. There's no filler, no poison in there or anything. They're, they're really good. I don't really eat that much meat, but it's okay. Have you ever eaten anything that's kosher? Kosher for Passover? No. You are aware there are people who eat kosher food who are not oh, Jewish. Yeah. No, oh, you realize yeah. they're not Jewish. They eat it because they perceive it to be better. Oh, yeah. But it's not intended for them. And that's kind of like this show. Got this it. show is made for men. Between 18 and 44. There are other people who like it. And they listen. But we still make it for the guys. Got it. Of all well, colors. I've learned a lot. I've learned a whole lot listening to you. And I have two boys. And I'll definitely share some of your insight with them when I get a little older. Oh, good. Yeah. Very nice. But I love you. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Nikki. Can you take me out, please? Well, how do you want to go? I like the original one. The original one? Of course I can do that. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Guys dance to get in a girl's pants. Sounds like a bumper stick. I couldn't have said it better myself. I think you did. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Let's say hello here to Pablo on the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likley, man. N nice to meet you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I'm not, I heard you talking to the, uh, to the young lady earlier about her having a kid, her boyfriend being 21. Well, I, my question to you, sir, uh, how would you how would you opinionize my lifestyle? I'm 22. I'm married. I've been married for a year and a half. I have a good job. I'm buying my house now, and I have two kids. So, in other words, you knocked up your wife before you got married? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you tell yeah. me this was your game plan? My game plan was that your game plan? Uh, yes, that was my game plan. The game yes. plan was to knock up your girlfriend and then marry her. Uh, to knock out my girlfriend and marry? Yes, sir. You planned on that? Say what? You made a plan, first knock up your girlfriend, then get married. That was your plan? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, why, were you, why were you in such a rush, Pablo? Why well, was such a rush? Um, maybe because, I mean, I just, I needed to, uh, I needed to, not, not, well, I just needed to uh, find my career and everything. And well, What college, I mean, I what college did that. you, what college did you graduate from? I graduated from a community college. It was Cedar Valley. Uh, Cedar so Valley you, so you college. never actually went to a four-year college? No, sir. No, no. And uh, what wonderful uh, career have you staked out for yourself after a two-year program? Well, uh, I do uh, the uh, uh, the attendance clerk for the Dallas Independent School District. That's what I do. You do what? Uh, CRC is for the computer records for students. How much does that pay? That pay for my salary right now. It pays twenty-eight thousand. Son. 28000 a year doesn't get you above the poverty level. I, I know, sir, but I mean, as of You right just now, said I mean, you're making good money. You're not making exactly. good money. You're making lousy money. Well, no, no, sir. At, at the time, my, my house pay was about nine, and I have, I, have, I, have, I have cars. My car has been with me since I've been, uh, I've been a senior high school. Wait a minute. You pay, you those... pay a $900 a month house payment. Yes. And you make 28000 a year, yes. which means you make 2200 a month minus right. taxes. Mm -hmm. And after taxes, uh, that would be what about uh, eighteen hundred, seventeen hundred? You bring home a month. 16, yeah, sixteen. Sixteen hundred. So you are paying nine hundred out of the sixteen hundred you make just on your mortgage, on mortgage. not counting the the food that the four of you eat, the right. cost of utilities, the cost of 
this cell phone you're talking on. Right. The cost of your car payments. You must have a car payment for one of those cars. No, no, Tom. Tom, uh, my father, uh, he had to help me uh, when I was working during high school. I was working. You need to help you with a new cell phone. Let him know that. Holy Jesus. 1-800-5-800-TOM. Josh on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Uh, I got a question for you because I know you're really on top of your game with uh, housing, utilities, and all that, like you were just talking to your last caller. I'm currently in an apartment. I uh, got a good uh, deal going. It's 700 a month, and uh, a lot of my utilities are tied into that. I want to get a boat, and I'm looking between 20 Where, If I may ask, without getting your home address, sure. where do you get an apartment in Southern California for $700 a month? Where? Yeah. Uh, Is this Panorama City, City, Hawaiian Gardens? Very close to the city of San Bernardino. Oh, so you're not not in L.A. at all? Not at all. I work in Orange County, and I I run uh, ambulance for a living, so I do do a lot in L.A. Okay. Um, But I'm looking at getting a boat, probably 20 to 40,000 is my price range, probably a a 30 or 40-foot boat. And just getting a slip somewhere near Long Beach or uh, Los Alamitos is my first pick right now because they actually allow uh, people to reside on their boat. And uh, keep that, is that a good idea? Pros and cons, I want to see what you think. Well, the biggest con is uh, Southern California can be very cold at night, especially by the water. So are you prepared for that? I uh, went through um, survival school with a branch of the Air Force. Not talking about survival school. You're in bed. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty good. If it's a the outdoor phone, temperature is 47 stuff. degrees, and you're on a boat mm, with, no with a blanket. You're on the boat. How, how many blankets do you need to steal yourself against 47 degrees Fahrenheit? Actually, um, right now, I mean, a standard like $20 sleeping bag at Big five, you can get a 40-degree one. All right, so and, you're prepared to completely rough it for forever? Well, not rough it for forever. The thing I'm thinking is I'm going to be making payments on that boat like it's a car. But instead of rent going in, like, you know, a toilet into an apartment complex, it's going into a boat. Which but I keep in mind, a boat is not real estate. A boat is like a not. car. It is a depreciating asset. True. Okay? Real estate is an appreciating asset over time, but not a boat. But see, I, the one thing I heard you say in an earlier show is that the smartest thing your dad did was keep the apartment because he wasn't making enough to afford a house and sink himself into debt. Absolutely. My- Absolutely. And I'm not suggesting you sink yourself into debt. But just as long as you understand that putting money into a boat is not like putting money into a house. It's not the same thing. Well, my thought is it's an asset which I can turn around later. Maybe not for as Well, you could say the same thing about a car. Than- But also the thing I'm thinking is it may be depreciate, but if, you know, I do maintenance and take care of it and really stay on top of it, that I will at least have something to walk away with, and that could be a down payment on a house later. What I'm saying is and don't plan on that. Plan on the boat being a complete wash. Okay. All right? Just All right. think of it. If, if you want to do this, and I'm not opposed to it, if, if you understand the conditions, you're going to be living on Yes. I mean, I live in a house that is insulated uh, six ways from Sunday. Oh, and yeah. it's been so cold in Southern California the last couple of weeks. I get in bed some nights, I'm freezing my ass off. Yeah, it's been cold lately. Yeah. And I'm not out of the water with an open door. Well, I'm thinking of a big enough boat. When you're talking a 30 or 40 foot boat, that's, I mean, it's starting to get really nice. It's not like right now I have a 21 foot sailboat, which I'm very proud of and very happy with. But that I would never want to rough it on that. With uh, a forty foot boat, you're talking a shower, full kitchen, I mean full bedroom, everything. You're yeah, talking well about look, if boat. you're happy, but again, don't don't <laughs> the, the the boat will depreciate. Yeah. So just simply look at it as instead of putting money into rent, you have a boat, but at the end you may have a boat that's worth eight thousand dollars or six thousand dollars, not twenty thousand dollars. True. Very All right. true. All right. So just don't count on that boat being something you can use as the down payment on a house. The down payment on a house in Southern California is a minimum $100,000. Yeah. 
Well, I was also thinking of, I mean, I you you kind of made the point that actually kind of negated the, my one thought, but, uh, you know, kind of flipping boats. Like, you know, really, I mean, when you buy a car, even though it's a depreciating asset, you're building up what you, I guess, equity. I'm, I'm Maybe I'm getting my uh, money wordage wrong. No, but in the end, you're losing equity because... If you buy a, a car for $20,000 and it loses 20% the day you drive it off the lot, now it's worth $16,000. Mm. So now your equity so is negative 4000 the day you start driving. Okay. You see? So you, by the time you've paid off the $16,000, it's now going to be worth $12,000. You'll still be a neg negative equity. I'm talking about a car now. Yeah. And a boat is pretty much going to work the same way. You know, when you buy a boat, I'm sure it has the same depreciation uh, 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 aspects that a car has. You know, the, the dealer wants to make a nice profit selling it to you. And so when he sells it to you, it's for a much higher price than you could get for it if you tried selling it on eBay. Sure. All right. So you're at negative equity the day you start. Mm -hmm. As you pay off the, uh, uh, the principal, uh, the value of the boat d d d declines. So even after paying it off after all those years, you may have very little equity until the very end. The way loans are done at the bank, they front load the interest. So the last year you're paying off a boat loan, you're paying mostly principal. The interest is already paid off. Yeah, you work on your interest in the beginning and the principal at right. the end. So you won't have any significant equity until the end of that loan. And even when you do, you're probably going to own something that's worth less than what you paid for. True. So while you may have equity, you know, you're going to, for a $20,000 boat at whatever interest rate you're going to pay, amortized over how many years, you may end up paying $40,000 for a $20,000 boat. It's very true. It's very true. So, again, it's not a good investment. Don't count on it as an investment. Well, the thing I'm thinking more, though, is right now my money's just going into apartment. I have no chance of affording a house in California. Yes, but you also time. have no maintenance costs. None. You don't put gasoline in it. You don't have to clean it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, if, if it has a repair issue, if it springs a leak or uh, needs some kind of uh, upkeep. And boats do require upkeep, as you know. Yes. Uh, your apartment doesn't require, if your toilet overflows, you call the building manager. That's true. And that's not going to happen on a boat. That boat's going to cost you money to operate. Very true. You know, you're going to put gasoline. It's, 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 it's uh, going to have an engine, correct? Yes, correct. You're going to need gasoline. You're going to need lubrication. You're going to need service. Mm -hmm. So remember, uh, this is going to this could end up costing you more than you think. Okay. And at the end, you're going to be left with an asset that you've put a lot of money into paying for, but you'll probably have something that's worth less than what you paid. But if you enjoy that lifestyle and you don't mind the inconvenience of very cold nights or stormy weather we can have in Southern California in January and February, and uh, based on what we've had so far, I think that's a real possibility. If you don't mind that, then go ahead and do it. I, look, I, I say find the cheapest way you can live possible. But remember, living on a boat is not as cheap as you think. Yeah, that's one of the things. And, I mean, like you're saying, even the stuff... I mean, I've already thought of some of the stuff you haven't, like boat, it's just like a car. you got to have insurance for it. And so it's another monthly thing. Uh, the slip to keep it in, uh, range for that is two, 300 depending on where you're docked out of. Well, isn't that uh, interesting? So you're paying how much per, wait, 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 you're paying how much per month in rent? Uh, 700 right now. So <laughs> you don't have to pay 300 to put it in a slip? Well, it depends where I go. I'm going to, that's one of the things I still... Let's say 200 The point is... Now, now you've got 500 to make boat payments, maintenance costs. This will end up costing you more than an apartment. Well, the thing is, I'm thinking of getting a bigger apartment, and my best friend said to me that, you know, living on a boat, and really, if I get a big enough boat, I think he'll go in on it with me because he's looking to move out as well. Well, you know, again, I'm, I'm talking to pencil it all out. But be sure to think of all those costs. Okay. You will have many costs on a boat that you don't have in an apartment. True. And you'll okay. be living in a tiny place. Hey, what's your internet access? <laughs> I 
that's the one thing I think I need more than anything. I don't think I'm I'm not much of a TV watcher, but when it comes to the web, I'm that's where I live. Yeah. So how much is it going to cost to have wireless internet access? Yeah, that's going to be get interesting. That's yeah. what I'm going to look into. I know that. Uh, a lot of the boats, it's just like going to RV parks with a lot of the, the harbors and the docks that they have hookups, that they have electrical, they have sewage, they have, you know, you name it, they have cable TV. I'm thinking if they have cable TV, uh, you know, all, all I need is a phone line and DSL. But that, that may not be as simple as you think. Really? I'm buying a house up in the middle of nowhere. You know, getting, like, DSL is as simple as calling the phone company when you live in L.A. Try it when you're in the middle of nowhere. True. Also, I'm going I mean, through I'm, it right I'm, now. I'm looking for uh, a harbor with a slip that's in a very metropolitan area. No, I understand that. What I'm saying, though, is being on a boat is not like living in an apartment or a house. But the one thing I know that two things are going to ease up um, money-wise right now. I, I drive an avalanche, a big Chevy truck. And um, right now I live in Garden Grove, and it, or I work in Garden Grove, and I live in Colton, and it's about a 70-mile one-way trip. So if I'm working out of Long Beach to Garden Grove, that's not even a 20-mile well, trip. Well, that's why I'm saying pencil it all out and really be honest with yourself and write down all the costs, including the fact that you'll be owning a depreciating asset after you've spent all this money. And then if you're comfortable with that lifestyle, then go for it. Hey, Tom, it's uh, Dirty Mikey. Back uh, interned about 10 years ago, and uh, I've been drunk ever since and been getting laid ever since and uh, not a serious relationship in the entire one, and I owe it all to you. And uh, I got to tell you, man, that conversation you gave to me, you sat me down and you actually cared enough about me to explain why I needed a prenup. And the day I gave a prenup to my fiance, she left the next day, and I've never been happier. I love you, man. Thank you for your advice, and I'm living a happy, healthier, much more fun life because of you. Love you, buddy. And uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy New Year. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yeah. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. At 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Wide open telephones. It's Jessica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Yes. Hey, I love you and I hate you, but I love you more. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's all a good thing. I just had a, I don't think that this is a, a probably an epiphany for any, for, it is for me a bit, but I'm sure it's not the, I'm not the first one to think this. The ladies need a female equivalent of Tom, of what you are for the guys. Well, why? So you can't be badge, but you know what I mean? I think well, it would make the world a better place. I know what you mean, but the problem is that uh, women are just not, uh, with, with few exceptions, are just not that funny. <laughs> and and the proof is in the pudding. Right? Look, yeah, the proof like is in the pudding. The look, look how few women do radio talk shows. Yeah, look at the ones who do. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, again, uh, they're, 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 first of all, there's very few women who host their own show. Well, and the ones, the what, the topics are like lame, and you, you just keep it real. You break it down, and it's so real that even the, you know, the women, even on the things that are less complimentary, I'll just put it that way, and things we may not really like to hear the truth about. You keep us there, and it's good for everyone, not just the guys and not just the girls. But I everyone. understand that. Unfortunately, most women don't want to make the sacrifices necessary to succeed in the radio business. Well, we're all, we're not at a loss. We're, we're totally like... You know, I just had so this conversation so again the other day. Who was it? There was a woman in this room the other day. It's driving me nuts. She was super hot, too. I don't remember who she was. Remember there was a hot, I can't remember who it was. There was a hot chick in here the other day having a conversation with me. And here, here's what she, she says to me. I'd love to do what you do. I would <laughs> love to do what you do. Well, that's great. She said, what do I have to do? Nobody well, can do it like you, Tom. Well, I said to her, you'll have to leave town and go work in, you know, a small market like I did. I went to work in Stanton, Virginia. I went to work in Albany, New York. I, I, I developed my act as I traveled. She said to me, 
Well, can I just, like, stay here in L.A.? No, you got to be really willing to take the risk. But well, that, few people are willing to do that. That's what women say. But you have the intelligence and the insight, too. Of also, you just you just keep it real, Tom. I guess it's more of a thank you call. But, God, I often wish. You know, I believe me, uh, there's a lot of people in the radio business who would love to hire a woman who could do what I do. In fact, there's a lot of people in the radio business who would like to hire a man who could do what I do. But exactly. I've, se- I've seen the ratings. I've, <laughs> seen, I've seen the ratings. I've seen the ratings of the competition, and there's not a lot of men who can do what I do either. No, I don't think anybody can. Nobody can the way you do it. So, anybody, by the way, that. by the way, anybody who thinks they're as good as I am, you you can come up to my compound up uh, in Santa Barbara County, and we can uh, sit on my twenty acres and discuss how good you are at this. <laughs> well, you're just and I thank you for it. So blow me up, Tom. Here you go, dear. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Jason on the Tom like his show. Hello, Tom. I listen to your show religiously, and I follow all your rules. And I especially like to listen to your wine show on Sundays, the Tasting Room with Tom Likas. Yeah. Uh, a lot of my friends, however, they kind of tease me about it because they say that you, that's not really you. you. They tell me that you come out across like a blowhard, pompous wine connoisseur, and. I usually try to, you know, defend you by telling them, hey, look, you don't know Tom. That's just the other side of Tom that's more refined. And uh, I don't know. There's there's another thing they kind of brought up to, uh, to me that I thought was kind of a contradiction, and I kind of wanted to ask you about it as well. Because I know that show that you have, it's a different format. Uh, you don't take any calls. It's mostly you have guests on there that are uh, uh, have a product or service that they're offering. And, uh, you know, you've got the jazzy music playing. You've got the soft voice completely different from your normal show. One thing they did bring up that I wanted to call you about, though, is the broads that you have on that show. You've got a lot of old broads on there that come on, and they, they're the type that would normally call your show that we that would be hating on you, calling you a woman hater and a misogynist pig, and and they kind of have a point there. I mean, uh, most of the broads you have on there, they're, they're past their expiration date. They, they've got the fupas, uh, the, the junk in the trunk. Actually, actually, some would fit that category and some would not. But I want to tell you, by the way, anyone who's in the public relations field does not. Trust me. But but let me just say this. We're not discussing any of the stuff we discuss on this show. Many of the women who appear on my wine show uh, right. don't even live in L.A. or in the cities where the show is broadcast. So they've never heard the show. Aha! Uh-huh. See, I, I was trying to tell them, well, maybe they've never heard of your show, or maybe they secretly hate you, but they're, they're not... Like, our show is not heard in the Napa Valley currently. Right, like Susan Cannon from Silver Oak Cellars. Okay, if she really... If she would <laughs> would normally hear your what show... What kind of a freak are you? Have you ever seen Susan Cannon? Do you know what she looks like, or...? She's not exactly a bathing beauty. It's so you've... Beauty, wait, correct. wait, wait. You are a real freak. You've seen Susan Cannon of Silver Oak. You know what she looks like? Yeah. Where'd you see her? And also Kelly Foreman from Oreo Wine. Not exactly you? Uh, dating you either. I mean, she's, she's past her expiration date. I'm not dating them. I'm talking about wine with them, for God's sake. I mean, yeah, but the thing is that uh, they've got the, the turkey necks going. They, 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 but they know about wine. Yeah, but I like it when you have men on there that know their stuff. But when you have these broads on there that don't belong on that show, it's kind of contradictory to your normal show. But it's not because they're here for their expertise on wine. They're not here to have sex with me. Yeah, but but come on, Tom. You think that maybe if they did sh- hear your show, they w- they would be on your wine show if they know that you call women. Some of them. Depositories. By the way, urinals, some which, of by them. The way, I, I agree some of them. Yes, I know you do. Some of them later on do listen to the show, and have been return guests. And, and they don't have any conflicts with you about it. Do they? Like behind the scenes, do they, they get in fights with you? Or no one that fights with me. No, because really? you have to understand. Everybody who comes on that show has a product they want to come on and talk about. Right. But I, I mean, what good they, would it do? Let's say, let's say you're about to get 12 unexpurgated minutes of airtime to promote your product. Why would you get into a fight with the host? Right. But see, that's my whole point. Don't, don't you think that they kind of know about you and they know how you feel about women? Even if they do, and, and they, they need me. Advice, they they need phony. me. They need me to promote their product. Well, you need you need them as well because obviously. You but need you know how much there's 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 ten thousand wineries in California alone. Okay. Right. So believe me, if if one is not happy with me, there's another one where that came from. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. There's plenty that. of them out there, and I'm buying a house uh, in the Santa Barbara uh, region, uh, in wine country, and I can tell you that plenty of wineries within a stone's throw of my property. 
So you're saying that none of these broads ever have a problem with you? Even if they do, problem. they wouldn't dare say so because they want airtime. Uh huh. So basically, they're just being phony. They're just uh, well. Fake. Again, I, all I need them for is to describe <laughs> their wines. Wow. I don't need them for any other purpose. I don't. I don't need to know what their personal lives are about, or you know whether they got a boyfriend or a husband. I don't need to know. By the way, one chick I haven't checked out is Lawrence Dunsworth from Lola. How does she look like? <laughs> She's pretty hot. Really? Yes. Okay, well, I'll give you that one, Tom, but still. You should get out of Lola's and check her out. I, li I like it when you have men on there that know their stuff. It's a guy That's show. a fanatic I listener. Show, you know? Well, I think that's great. The guy's a fanatic listener to the tasting room. If you live here in L.A., it's on Sunday night from 7 to 9, and uh, it's uh, on many of the other stations they carry this show, so check your local listings. Check the website of the radio station you're listening to. And uh, if your local station doesn't carry it, well, they should, and you should tell the station they should carry it. But if not, you can always go to uh, blowmeuptom.com between 7 and 9 p.m. Pacific time, Sunday night, and you can hear the tasting room with Tom Likas and hear the show he's talking about. And you can imagine whether or not the chicks are hot who come in here. <laughs> That's the biggest tasting room fan we've ever heard from. Boy, he knows a lot about that show. <laughs> what? He's like a stalker. The guy knows Susan Cannon from Silver Oak. Oh, yeah, I've seen her. She's not a looker. That's what he says. What are you doing? Not the centerfold of Playboy. It's a show about wine, for God's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. By the way, can I interject? Because Susan Cannon, uh, for example, does know The Daily Show and she doesn't have an issue with it at all. I mean, in fact, she loves it. She's she a fan. She it very entertaining. Yes. Uh, um, and that doesn't stop her from talking about wine or, or stop her from listening to the show or no. whatever. No. And, 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 and we have gotten along great with her. She, oh, she brings great wine. What's better than Silver Oak and Toomey Merlot and all that stuff that they have? And, uh, and we, we're not here to talk about sex. We're here to talk about wine. But in answer to his question, no, I mean, they do know what you do. They do listen to The Daily Show, most of the people that we have on that show. Or even and they if don't they have issues. Even if the first time they came on, they didn't right. hear it. The second time, they usually have checked out the website or they have listened online or whatever. And But the, the second time around, they know who they're dealing right. with. Right. It's just a different topic of conversation. Anyone who's a repeat customer on the show, you can pretty much be assured that they've signed off on The Daily Show. Speaking of signing, it's not like we sign racks on that show. Maybe we should start. <laughs> well, that's a fine Cabernet. Now, dear, why don't you come over here and not hook your bra? <laughs> here, I've got one of these little silver uh, pens that you use to write on a wine bottle. I'm going to do this on your breast right now. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Sean on the Tom Likas show. I've got a little over a minute, Sean, so you'll have to uh, truncate uh, your story. Step it up. Too. My phone's about to die. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, really quick. I, I took this girl out on Monday uh, to an open bar private party, and what happened was um, everything was cool. We all got drunk, and uh, she started dancing with this other girl. A few hours later, this girl that she was dancing with comes up to me talking about she wants to take her home. So with me being drunk, I just snapped and tripped, and I go, you know, no, that's not going to happen. I flipped out, made a big scene. She ended up crying. I uh, It got so bad, um, I don't know even why I said it. I told her I was going to take off my MySpace. She started bawling even more, made a bigger scene. And to make the story short, uh, we went back to my house. We made up, had made up sex, and afterwards I found out the condom broke. And she claimed that she took a pill, and now we're not talking. And I... I, I'm not, I'm just scared she didn't take the pill. What should I do? You mean like a morning after pill? Yeah. Well, <laughs> do you even know who this is? Do you know this person? Yes, I do. Well, I'd be talking to her until I was pretty sure that there was no pregnancy there. You want to get a look at that fupa? See if it's expanding at all. Thank you so much for the call. Good luck on that. The Tom Likas Show.